Thanks to the supporters of channel member Tyler Huffman. Oh, boys and girls, this could be it. We have got three games in this episode. If we win all three of them, we win the Bundesliga, German Cup, Champions League treble. It would also be our third Bundesliga in a row. And I think we can all agree all of that would make me a legend and would therefore signify the end of this year's non-league to legend. So it's very simple. Win all three. And that's your lot. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 30 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our final three games of the season potentially final three games of the series. Uh, we're at home against Freiburg in the Bundesliga. We've got the German Cup final against Eintracht Frankfurt and then the Champions League final against Spurs. But before any of that, we could actually win the Bundesliga right now without playing a game because we're five points clear having won our game yesterday. Bayern Munich are away against Hamburg. Anything other than a win for them and we will win the league here. So I wanted you to be here for the moment if it happens. Um, I suspect they'll win though because they've been pretty relentless. Um, has it happened? Do we get to see the result? Bayern Munich win. So we have to win or at least match Bayern's result on the final day. So I'll meet you on the final day of the season. Hopefully, for the first of three trophy lifts on today's episode. So here we go then, folks. Final league game at home against Freiburg. And this is our team. Antonio Carlos in goal. And um, we often do this in the league. We have Gray play as the inverted wing back alongside Van Eijmer. So Gray, Suarez, Caldere and Schakowsky tucking in at right back. Van Eijmer, Bellingham and Ruiz in midfield. Cespedes on the left. Herrera on the right. Big Kev up front. We just need a win and we've won a lot of football matches in the Bundesliga this year. So fingers crossed that this can be another one and we can end things off with a trophy lift. Let's get the league table on there once Big Kev's done his customary long throw. That boy loves a long throw. And there's Ruiz and that's 1-0 before he even had a, had a chance to get the league table on screen. Uh, we've gone 1-0 up through Ruiz. This is going to be hopefully quite the indicator today of just how dominant we are in Bundesliga because um, it's been a long time since I've shown you a Bundesliga game against anyone other than Bayern Munich. Uh, Bayern Munich are playing right now as well. They're winning 1-0 against Augsburg. So it is quite important that we win this game. So fingers crossed, we shall. Bellingham plays it across to Gray. Gray back to Suarez. And uh, we're just going to camp out on the edge of their area for a bit now. This is uh, this is our usual habitat, just keeping the ball, waiting for an opportunity. Cesped is going to try and create one by skinning his man, which we know he's very good at doing. What He is just a proper winger. Uh, Bellingham on the edge of the area can score from here and doesn't. I mean, he normally would. That was kind of Jude Bellingham territory there. It's going to be Gray to take the throw. And Gray gives it to Cesped, who could just turn and dribble. He might as well. Gives it back to Gray, in fact. And Ruiz is trying to get in behind. Maybe looking for his second goal. He gets his second goal. 13 for the season now for Ruiz. And I know he's on a yellow card, so we're probably not going to keep him on the pitch for the full match. But at the moment, he's having a jolly nice afternoon. 2-0 with 13 minutes gone. Hopefully, this message is getting through to Bayern Munich that everything they do is pointless. And we're about to make it a hat-trick of Bundesligas. Because at 2-0 up after less than 15 minutes. I don't anticipate us messing up from here. Although, like I say, Bayern have been absolutely relentless. If it hadn't been for that big 8-0 win we had right at the start of the season, this season would be turning out very, very differently. I think that might be their only defeat that they've had. Uh, Ruiz is in for his hat-trick here. Oh, he's hit the outside of the post. He could have had a 15-minute hat-trick at the start of this game from midfield. I think at that point, we just take him off after 15 minutes, get him a standing ovation. Just for context as well, Freiburg in seventh place. They're not rubbish. They're going to they're gonna get in Europe. They'll be in the Conference League next year from this league. And uh, we're absolutely ripping them apart. Ionita, I think, was our man at 
Burton, maybe. He, he's the left back I'm thinking of. Um, I think we had him at Burton. Cesped looking to skin another fullback. Gives it to Ruiz. Ruiz has been fouled there. I think it's probably outside of the area. The ref is uh, checking with VAR. Either way, if it's a penalty, Ruiz is going to take it. And he's won the penalty as well. So he absolutely earns the right to take it. But it's not a penalty. He was outside the area. But we are going to get a free kick, which Bellingham's going to come across to take. And we've got plenty of options lined up to nod this one. He's overhit it, really. That's a couple of times today. Bellingham's been aware of the cameras on him and has just kicked the ball a little hard. You'd think after 15 years as a top-level professional footballer, he'd know how hard to kick the football now. Uh, Van Eijmer playing it back to Calderi, and uh, he's just looking for options to deliver it to. Schakowsky, who's stepped forward despite playing as the inverted fullback. Big Kev, look how deep he comes as well. He's basically an extra midfielder. I really like Big Kev being in this team. I know Egan has outscored him this year, but Big Kev is awesome. And now Cesped just destroying another fullback. This time plays it back to Gray. Cesped's got it again, floats it over to Big Kev, who couldn't get a proper contact on it. It falls to Ruiz, who's swinging a boot at it, trying to get himself his uh, final day of the season hat-trick. But it wasn't to be. And Freiburg have got the audacity to have a little attack, which Suarez is dealing with with relative ease. And now Cesped is on an adventure again, coming down this left-hand side. That's one man down. Uh, two men beaten. Ruiz on a hat-trick, but plays it over to Herrera. It takes a huge deflection. But Herrera... I mean, it's credited to him. It's his, his, his 11th goal of the season. I've lost count of how many players we've got who are into double figures for goals for this season. I don't think we... Uh, well, this is a three-match episode. We're not going to watch every replay if we're going to be rattling in the goals. Bayern also 3-0 up inside 15 minutes, by the way. So, like I say, very much doing their bit. And it's all for nothing. And if anything, that makes it all the sweeter. Gray playing it forward to Ruiz. Ruiz is clattered again by that same guy. Uh, Gray has kept his run going, though, and scores his fourth goal of the season. He loves playing in midfield the way he is today. On a day like this, there's not even any pretense that he's starting at left back. We've got a back three and Gray is just part of the midfield. Watch his run. That's Gray. And he's just, yeah, I'm a midfielder and I'm having this. This is my goal. Bang. On his weak foot as well, just to show off. 4-0 to us. Bayern. 4 nil up as well. Nim, who we had on loan at Bayern, has got two goals for them. So Kev can spot a player. I'm taking... I think that might have been one that my director of football did for me. I don't remember now. I'd have to go back and check the tapes. Uh, Cesped, back to Suarez. And now Suarez to Cesped again. And, I mean, we're just keeping hold of the ball relatively comfortably. This is what I've spent the last two, two and a bit seasons watching in the in between bits. Just absolute dominance in almost every match that we play. Even when we don't score as many goals as this. This is how we play. We just absolutely control every match. It's why sometimes I get a little bit caught out in the Champions League because I'm so used to doing this and just letting them play wonderful football that when we have to tweak things for the Champions League, it's all a little bit alien to me. Um, but that's 5-0 now, 35 minutes gone. Presumably Bayern have got five as well. What a lovely picture-in-picture -picture day this would be for anyone watching German football. Um, just have both matches on, watching Bayern go goal for goal with us and it not matter at all. They have! There's Bayern's fifth as well. We're both 5-0 up. This is... The atmosphere at Bayern must be so muted. It must be the most frustrated 5-0 up at half-time they've ever had because they'll be over the moon thinking, oh, we're actually going to do it. We're 5-0 up at half-time. Let's just check the score in the Dortmund game. Oh, now I'm sad. That's what the rest of us had to put up with for 18 years, Bayern fans. So... You know what? It's fine. This is... We've got 15 more years of this. <laughs> um, Freiburg haven't had a shot. Bayern are now 7-0 up. <laughs> oh, it's it's amazing. Ruiz gets his hat-trick. We've gone to six. We need another one to go blow for blow with Bayern. What a final day this has been. This is absolutely bonkers. Um, but I think we should probably start protecting some of these players with an eye on the Champions League final. So we're probably not going to get more than six because we're going to start taking players off. Ruiz has got his hat-trick. So Elunga can come on for him. Um, who else are we going to take off to protect? I guess Big Kev can... We'll give Conor Egan the chance to get the golden boot, which I don't think he's on for at the moment. Uh, Cesped's going to come off as well. So we don't really have any backup for him. So I think what we might do is... 
have a look at Cesar Marin, get Ilunga out onto the side there, and Marin can come on in midfield, who we signed in January and haven't really used because it's quite hard to get a new player settled into an established team. Bayern are now 8 nil up. I would love to be a fly on the wall at their stadium right now. 8 nil up and knowing it doesn't matter. And, I mean, that scoreline as well, such special significance this season. <laughs> oh, they'll they'll know all about 8-0. Uh, right, Marin, playing it out to Ilunga. Ilunga, back to Suarez. Come on, let's, let's get eight of our own again. Let's finish the season in style. We want a confidence booster going into these final couple of cup finals, which, I mean, to be honest, this is quite the confidence booster already. Why have I left Bellingham on the pitch? Bellingham should probably be coming off. We're 6-0 up. There's no reason for him to be on the pitch. Elunga has a goal. That's now 7-0. We are going to take off Bellingham um, and Van Aijma. Ayadeli, I'd love to be able to bring on for both of them, but uh, I don't think that's allowed. So we'll bring on Fontenils in midfield. And he can, in fact, we'll swap them around like that. And Ayadeli can go into midfield. Fontenilles can sit at the base of said midfield. Herrera on a 10 out of 10, probably wondering why he's got to play the full 90. It's just the way it is. Bayern now 9-0 up. I tell you what, if it had been 0-0 here, we'd be starting to get a little bit worried because they were catching up on goal difference as well. They went out today to try and have a big win and hope that we lost. They've done their bit. We've won 7-0 as well. They've made basically no progress. Have we got time for two more? Are they up to 10 yet? No, it's still 9-0 in the Bayern game. <laughs> 16 goals between us on the final day of the season. German match of the day is going to be a fun watch tonight, especially for Dortmund fans, because we have a trophy lift, a third consecutive Bundesliga victory. And I am absolutely delighted. Hopefully the first of three trophies we're going to lift on today's episode. And that should be Bellingham ready to lift the trophy. He's just going to show it around a little bit. And then we are going to have a little bit of a celebration. Come on, boys. With a lovely moustache in the background as well. And there is trophy lift number one of the day. We're not going to dwell on that one because we've got two more to come. Overconfidence might be a problem. Right, let's go. Oh, I've just got a steam achievement for winning three consecutive top division titles. How exciting. Right, let's go and play the German Cup final. Right, Cup final then. Hopefully I'm not being too clever by rotating a little bit. Fingers crossed it should be fine. Antonio Carlos in goal, a back four of Garcia, Fontenilles, Calderi and Ferreira. Ayadeli at the base of the midfield, Bellingham and Ruiz ahead of him. Elunga on the left, Oliveira on the right and Big Kev up front. We've actually got two players to give squad numbers to, including name in the game, Glenn Patrick, who is going to be on the bench for this one, potentially on the bench for the Champions League final as well, because as a homegrown club player who's under 19 or under 20 or whatever the rule is he might be able to sit on the bench for that final so we might actually be doing our our finals with a name in the game player breaking through which uh it's taken a while this year some of our youth intakes haven't been too hot um right come on win today we want a nice big win or do we want a nice quick win on a three on a three match episode maybe just a one nil if we could if we could grab the one now um, so that we can, we all we're all here for the Champions League final, really. That's what we want at this point, right? Ayadeli at the base of the midfield, forward to Bellingham, and now Bellingham gives it to Oliveira. Oliveira with the bald patch on the top of his head crosses to Ilunga, and the goalkeeper doesn't really deal with it. But it's back with Oliveira again, and for a third time, Oliveira he's trying to do the job all on his own, uh, but unfortunately. The defender gets in and ruins our fun. Very, very sad. Nil-nil at the half-hour mark. Um, if we could uh, do a goal, that would be that would be nice. We it is, it is quite important to me that we win all three of these matches today. Bellingham with the in-swinger and Garcia. No, it's Big Kev. I thought it was Garcia. It's Big Kev doing a big header from the uh, from the corners. It feels like forever since you've seen him score from a corner. Um, but remember, and I don't know if I've mentioned it before, he's six foot nine. And it is quite useful. I mean, between him and Garcia, they're about 15 feet tall lurking on that far post there. Frankfurt, terrified. But that'll do. We'll, do, we'll take this. We don't need any more highlights. Let's just get straight to the trophy lift.
and then get to the Champions League final, which is at Old Trafford, I think I saw, and against a Spurs team who've actually just won the Premier League for the second time in three years, and it's only their second ever Champions League final. So if we don't do our bit in this Champions League final, Spurs are already becoming the best team in England. That place has gone bananas since I left, but we can't let them win their first ever Champions League against against me. That'll be uh, that'll be a genuinely hideous thing. So uh, that's uh, all the motivation we needed to win a Champions League finally in this save. Uh, but Frankfurt, uh, they've noticed that my eye has been uh, my my attention has been caught by the Champions League final that takes place next week, and they're just trying to catch me out today. And I don't care for it. Um, but that is uh, two of our backup defenders combining there. I think, uh, in fact, it might have been Calderi who knocked the header down. But Fontanils is there to drive it home. I don't know what we could possibly be having this disallowed for. I was going to say that there's nobody offside here. Unless it was Calderi, but it wasn't because it was it, the goal was given at 2-0. We really don't need any more highlights now, please, uh, please, football manager. Bellingham's got other ideas. He probably shouldn't still be on the pitch at this point. Calderi, is he just playing his centre forward in this one? He gets the assist on the previous one. And I think he scored there, although it is going to VAR again. VAR, what are you saying to me? And it's been given. Calderi has just decided to have a lovely cup final, it seems. He's having a nice day. Not, uh, why bother with defending against a team that aren't bothering with attacking? With uh, it, Normally, it would be Suarez who goes off on an adventure, but Caldera is the senior defender in the team today <laughs> and has taken it upon himself to just play as a libero, even though he's not been given the instructions to do it. And he's... Uh, He's having quite the attacking impact. Right, we are going to make some changes just to protect players. Bellingham in particular. You know what? Glenn Patrick's coming on. This is Glenn Patrick. He's going to play. This is his debut. But he's going to come on for Bellingham. And we are also... Who else are we going to take off? Who are we worried about? I guess Caldera would be the other one. Um, we'll bring Schakowsky on for him. I'm tempted to take Antonio Carlos off. Maybe if we get one more goal... We'll take off Antonio Carlos just to protect everyone who's likely to start in the Champions League final, which I guess also includes Ferreira and probably Ruiz as well. Let's take Ruiz off. Uh, Ilunga can drop back into midfield and Cesped can come on for him. And I think we will take off Ferreira. Although we don't have anyone to come on and play right back. I guess we can just bring Suarez on. And shuffle everyone around in there a little bit. Suarez can just come on and play libero. Go on and have some fun. And we will save our final substitution because it's still not even the 70th minute. But I think the final substitution might be Antonio Carlos coming off unless someone else gets particularly tired in the meantime. Just as a, as a precaution, we need to protect him. Although part of me worries that the game will see that as a tactical decision and he'll get a grump on. And the last thing we need is the best goalkeeper in the world to be grumpy before the Champions League final. So maybe we just leave him on and hope he doesn't get injured. Cesped is in and Cesped... Can't apply the finish. It remains 3-0. 15 minutes to go. I'm just very actively monitoring the fitness levels of my players because I don't want anybody picking up a knock before the Champions League final. That would be disastrous, especially because it's Spurs. Um, right, we are going to make the final change. And who have we got to come on? I'd quite like to bring Kai Norman North on. So on that basis, I guess Big Kev is going to come off. North is going to come on up front. It's the first game he's played since the very first season when he came on, scored a couple of goals because we had no other strikers and then we sent him out on loan for three and a half years. So this is his first game since then. The last time he played, he played centre forward and scored twice. So he is quite good. Um, it's going to be Garcia with the long throw. Normally Big Kev's job taking the long throws and Cesped now has number four. I, I would have liked to have seen North grab a goal. Just to keep his just to keep his goal scoring record going, but uh, it's not to be. But it is four nil for what is basically a reserve team on the pitch now. Um, but we are about to get our second trophy lift of the episode. Hopefully, second of three. Here we go again as we uh, march up to lift this one with a very different eleven 
to the 11 that played in the previous game, although Bellingham has very much got himself back on there to lift the trophy. Um, so it is Jude Bellingham being handed another little cup for us. Antonio Carlos has got the captain's armband on, so uh, he should be lifting it with Bellingham. But Bellingham to lift the trophy. Come on, get it up in the air. We've got places to be. There we go. Trophy lift two. Please let there be a trophy lift three. Well, here we go then, folks. Champions League final and uh, Emil Hiskey aside, everyone we would want to be involved is able to be involved. Antonio Carlos in goal, a back four of Gray, Suarez, Caldera, Ferreira, Van Eijmer at the base of the midfield, Bellingham and Ruiz ahead of him, Cesped on the left, Herrera on the right, Big Kev up front, which allows us that 70th minute Conor Egan substitution, which has proven oh so important on our run through to the final. Remember, beating Spurs and stopping them win a first, winning a first ever Champions League, almost as important as winning one for ourselves. Something's got to give today. It's me versus Spurs. Why does it always have to come down to this? And one of us is going to be very, very sad. Bellingham gives the ball away in midfield. That's not why we spent a hundred million pounds on him and made him captain. Spurs are in, but Antonio Carlos back at the game at the ground where he's played hundreds of games, by the way. We're at Old Trafford for this final. Antonio Carlos spent four or five seasons as Manchester United's starting keeper. He's in very familiar surroundings, as is Suarez, of course, who we signed for Burton from Manchester United. Um, so there's a few boys who know their way around this ground. I've obviously played here many times as well from my time at Burton. And now Ferreira with the cross cesspit nods it down to Ruiz. Uh, but unfortunately, the goalkeeper, the guy who replaced Carlos, makes an incredible save. It's going to be Gray to hit the in-swinging corner. Looking for the near post. Big Kev, I think he's hit the post. Oh my goodness me, I think he hit the post. That was so close. Daniel Noah, by the way, in goal for, in goal for Spurs, I think is one of the goalkeepers I was considering when we brought in Antonio Carlos. I think he was also at Manchester United, if I remember rightly. I think they were first and second choice at Manchester United. So goodness knows who they've got in goal now. Um, but Bellingham to take the corner. In swinger. Got to be going for that near post with Van Eijmer. I've never seen Van Eijmer get on the end of a corner ever. Bellingham picks up the uh, picks up the loose ball and the, uh, the Spurs goalkeeper once again making a relatively comfortable save. Cesped has picked up an injury here, which is a little bit of a shame because he's been so good in this run to the final. He's finally got himself into the team and um, single-handedly dragged us through. Was it the quarterfinal where he was incredible? Um, but I think we are going to have to take him off because he is struggling a little bit. We've got Ilunga on the bench. Of course, Ilunga was one of the stars of some of the earlier rounds in the Champions League. They both had arguments to be starting today, um, but I think we probably need to make that change. Um, so Cesped's going to come off. Ilunga comes on. Different kind of player, probably more of a goal threat. Um, but Cesped's got one more chance to go past a few players. What a pass! Herrera to Ruiz, and Cesped has had his impact on this Champions League final. It's going to be the last thing he's going to get to do as part of it. But we have gone one nil up. Cesped, what a what a last couple of months of the season he's had. Just a little burst of pace on what is it? A groin he's done. How has he had that burst of pace there? That's just pure will to win the game. Driving him past Spurs players. That little burst of acceleration. Great wing play from Herrera. Big Kev misses out, but Ruiz is there to pick up the scraps. And yes, we will proceed with the change. Alunga is now on on that left-hand side, but we are 1-0 up in this match. It's already a better Champions League final than our previous failed effort, where, of course, we faced Inter when they were at the height of their horrible square midfield, and uh, they they just scored early and we just never got into the game, never really got the ball. Gray, it's raining now. Proper Manchester weather. Um, Ilunga um, comes away with the ball. Van Eijmer to Bellingham. Bellingham to Ferreira. Now Big Kev and that's 2-0. And I think it's happening, boys and girls. Big Kev makes it 2-0. And uh, I'm starting to get a little bit excited. Excited and sad in equal measure because I'm excited that we're finally going to do what we set out to do. But a little bit sad that this probably means it is the end. Um, but Big Kev... Lovely finish from him, justifying his selection ahead of Egan. 2-0. Now, Spurs still haven't had a shot. We are dominating the match. We are dominating possession. That has been an excellent first half. And after all of that talk, 
of Bundesliga not being as good as some of the other leagues. The Premier League is the best league in the game. Tottenham have just won the Premier League and we've... I mean, I'm not going to say it. We're doing quite well, though. They've got Borches in their team, of course, who used to play for us. So maybe we've uh, closed the gap between the Bundesliga and some of the other European leagues as well by putting together this excellent Borussia Dortmund team. We are a different team to what we were four years ago when we were last in the Champions League final. And now Caldera to Big Kev and Bellingham. And that's 3-0. And if that's given, that's game over. Referee is just checking in his ear hole. And fingers crossed it is going to be given. And it hasn't. It's been disallowed. So it's not quite job done just yet. Keep your focus, boys. I don't want to see the replay. I'm too excited. I just want to get to the end of the game unless we start losing, in which case I want all the highlights. But at the moment, I just want the end of the football match. Uh, right, we are going to take off Gray, who is uh, he's tiring. He's on a yellow card. He's not playing great. Garcia, much more defensive-minded. Um, I think we take off Jude Bellingham. The multiple-time English player of the year for Ayadeli his successor, two English midfielders there in England about to beat an English team in the Champions League final. That's what I'm talking about. Alunga, of course, has also got connections to the Premier League or at least to English football. We signed him from Watford. I'm not sure whether they were Premier League or Championship, um, but he came in from Watford and uh, Spurs looking to get themselves back into the game. Let's not do any victory speeches just yet because, I mean, they have just won the Premier League. They're not a poor side and it's not a fluke either. They won it two years ago as well. Like I said before, the Premier League has been turned on its head since I left Burton. It's up, it's topsy-turvy land and Spurs are apparently good now. Um, but there's Caldere. Looking for options ahead of him. Ayadeli is one of those, and he is just going to run with the ball for a bit. Lays it off to Ferreira. Ferreira's got Herrera ahead of him, but Ayadeli's continued his run. Now into the area. Ayadeli cuts it back. There's Ilunga. That is 3 0, and that is game over. And Ilunga, what a debut season he's had at Dortmund. Oliveira has just won German League Newcomer of the Year, but if that award included Champions League performance as well, Elunga would be guaranteed because he's been so good in this Champions League run and absolutely deserves his goal in the final as well. And we have just absolutely ruined Tottenham today. We've done to them what Inter did to us three years ago, four years ago, whenever it was. And hopefully it takes them three years to recover from it as well, like it has us. Right, I am going to bring on Conor Egan on the right-hand side. Normally, that would be Oliveira, but Egan deserves to be on the pitch in this Champions League final. So he's going to come on. Um, Ilunga is actually tired and is going to come off again, I think, having only just come on earlier in the match. I think Oliveira is probably the one to bring on. Um, yeah, Oliveira can come on and play on that side. It's a little bit out of position for him, but I'm sure he's capable of doing it. And uh, like I say, he's another one who's had a very good season. So has certainly earned his right to be on the pitch when the final whistle goes and we declare ourselves as quadruple winners and Champions League winners, which is the really crucial bit. Um, Ayadeli plays it all the way back to Antonio Carlos. I think that might be his first touch of the ball today. Um, Van Aijma, who is going to be able to stay at the club now, because remember, we had that promise with, with Van Aijma that if we didn't win the Champions League this year, we'd let him go to Barcelona. We've won the Champions League, unless something goes desperately wrong. So fingers crossed, that means he stays. Van Aijma to Big Kev. Ruiz bursting out of midfield again, as he's done so many times this season. Garcia across to Van Aijma. Ayadeli, Conor Egan is in. He deserves a goal today. He's hit the base of the post. Oliveira trying to get it back into the middle. It comes back to Garcia. Oh, my goodness. What has it been? Five months in the real world that this save has been going on. I always feel weird at the end of Non-Lead to Legend and I will urge you all not to go anywhere. We have a good series coming soon. We'll have the five years in the future next week um, and then the next series will start immediately after and it's going to be a good one. So don't go anywhere. I know some of you try and escape when Non-Lead to Legend finishes, but we've won the Champions League. And I don't know why we've got this weird camera angle. We're watching Bellingham carry it over towards the team. That man's got some sore arms after all his heavy lifting today. But there is our Champions League win. I don't know where my little Champions League trophy is. I haven't needed it this year. But we finally got the job done. Borussia Dortmund have won it all. Non-league to legend. Complete. Wowzers. 
<laughs> what a team we've put together there. Goodness, goodness me. Right, let's just go through the formalities to end the save off. Um club world cup not a chance not a chance am i playing in that ever again there's your confirmation that van Aijma is happy to stay hopefully some of the other want away players will decide to stay as well we've still got four players who want to play in a better division but we've just absolutely destroyed the champions of the best division so balls to that you lot stay in here and hopefully carrying on dominating germany and europe but we've done it I will just drop a save point here, as I always do, just in case we want to continue it at any point on Twitch or something like that. I suspect we won't, um, but it's time to retire. It has been an emotional one. Let's just check my player history. Um, so three clubs managed. Um, over 2,000 days at Burton. I've earned £18 million in my career. I'm still only 52 years old in game as well, so going to very much enjoy this retirement. And um, We had a net transfer spend across, what, 12 years, 13 years, 11 years, however many years it's been, a net transfer spend of less than £700 million. I think that's fair. I think that's very fair. Five cup wins, three league wins. The vast majority of the wins have been here in Germany where I think I've made it to seventh on the Hall of Fame in Germany. And crucially, zero time spent on holiday. We've done it all, boys and girls. Right, it is time to retire. Hopefully you've enjoyed the series. Like I say, we've got five years in the future coming up on Monday, and then the new series will start probably on Tuesday. As this is out, I'm actually in Scotland because I'm going to an East Fife game tomorrow, so there'll be an East Fife match day vlog out on the channel very, very soon. So assuming I get back from Scotland without any, without any complications, I'll be able to start recording the new series when I get back. But like I say, going to be a good one. You're not going to want to miss it. Thank you for all your support throughout non league to legend It's been another incredible year. Obviously, we'll be back with this series again next year on the new game, FM25. Um, but for now, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, because the next series is going to be great. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. There you go. Retirement confirmed.